everybody, my name is Jeanette. This is my first YouTube video. I wanted to share with you my experience of my recent hip surgery. Um, I had hip surgery back in October, uh, arthroscopy to be exact. Um, I had a lot of restrictions um, and luckily I knew ahead of time that I was going to need a surgery uh, several weeks in advance, in fact. So it gave me time to think about what my restrictions meant and the things that I was going to need to get me through those restrictions so that I could have some type of independence um, so I wouldn't be too much of a burden on the people that were going to be helping me because it was a lot of work um, to keep my household and my girls' routines up. Um, with me not being able to drive and being on crutches um, for several weeks. So uh, I wanted to take you through my thought process, my preparation, uh, the things that I used uh, throughout my 13 weeks uh, at home and uh, things that I bought but maybe didn't use as much as I thought I was gonna use them. Um, so let's get started. So uh, the very first thing that I needed was to get crutches. Um, my surgeon set up an appointment for me to get sized for my crutches. I'm pretty short. I'm about 4'11", something like that. And so I knew right away that I was going to want uh, cushions uh, and little organizers on my crutches because uh, I knew that not being able to put full weight on my right foot due to the hip surgery um, I didn't want to have to carry a purse or a backpack that I was gonna have to possibly set one of my crutches down in order to do that and have it fall on the floor um, which is something that's gonna happen a lot uh, during the next several weeks, you're going to drop a lot of things. Um, going to become more of a klutz than you ever thought you would be. Um, but uh, I bought these off of Amazon. The, they're called crutches. Um, this, I had to modify these a little bit. Um, the cushion on here was pretty hard. And it was very uncomfortable and I couldn't see myself going through um, the six weeks on crutches um, and having to deal with that. And also the same thing for this um, little hand grip. Um, the foam that it came with was just too hard and it was hard to get my hand around it. Um, uh, I have some joint issues and uh, it was something that I wasn't going to be able to tolerate um, being on crutches all day long. So I took those inserts out and I replaced it with um, some foam that I already had laying around the house. Um, it was uh, this foam over here. Um, It's just, it's just called New Foam, and it's something that you can use for uh, cushions, outside cushions. It's very uh, thin. I already had that around the house, and I just uh, cut those to size and then um, just put them in here. It made a big difference. It made it a lot more comfortable. Um, this Crutchies, it has a pocket, two pockets actually. A pocket up front, which I used to... Um, uh, put like my sunglasses or my wallet and keys and then the back one I didn't use um, too much. I think the back one I actually used to put my wallet in and then the front one my keys and my sunglasses. And then I uh, bought a bigger little tote uh, for this side in case I needed to bring any paperwork with me. Um, I wanted to be able to have something that I could carry a book or whatever I needed um, for that. So one thing I wanted to show you that didn't come, doesn't come with the crutches, but was added 
Um, I asked my husband if he could um, find a way to attach uh, a grabber to my crutches. Um, when you're on crutches, um, you're constantly dropping things. And I was having to, when I dropped something, I was having to walk to the other room and get the grabber and then walk back or use my crutches to get back to the other room in order to pick up whatever I dropped. Um, so I asked him if he could uh, find something um, that would hold my grabber so that I could just always have it with me when I was around the house. I wouldn't have to ask somebody to help me pick something up all the time. Um, or I wouldn't have to go into the other room um, to get it if I was to get the grabber um, if I was by myself. So this was a nice addition. It just kind of pops on and off. Um, it's hard to get it back on on camera with one hand. So let me see what I can if I can show you. But it's really simple. Just pops on and off. Uh, very handy. So I had a lot of restrictions post-op. Um, one of the most important ones that I had to keep up for the entire. Uh, 13 weeks was not being able to bend more than 90 degrees, uh, meaning I couldn't touch my toes, I couldn't bring my knees up to my chest at all. Um, I wasn't going to be able to get my pants on, my socks on, my shoes on, on or off, or uh, scrub my legs, or shave my legs, or put lotion, or anything like that. Um, without assistance so I brought I bought a dress kit for that um, another restriction was that I was going to be on crutches for six weeks um, I wasn't going to be able to carry anything while I was on crutches um, which was a hard thing to grasp um, <laughs> exactly how many things you're going to need to carry um, that you normally carry throughout the day you're not going to be able to carry uh, with crutches um, Another restriction was that I had to keep my leg in a neutral position, meaning my toes needed to be uh, directly in front of me. They couldn't, uh, I couldn't cross my legs um, in any way, um, whether I was laying down or standing up. Um, some of the things that I had to do on a daily basis was my husband had to rotate my leg and once in the morning and one time at night, I had to do uh, 10 rotations outward, 10 rotations inward, um, something I wasn't going to be able to do myself. Um, so my husband had to do that throughout the, and my daughter had to do that throughout the whole 13 weeks, uh, rotations in the morning. And then right before I went to bed, I had to be on a bike for 30 minutes every morning. Um, I had physical therapy homework that I had to do three times a day. Um, when I wasn't doing those things and I wasn't at physical therapy twice a week, um, getting formal physical therapy twice a week, I had to be on a continuous passive motion machine for four hours a day. And I also had to be on a cryo machine, which is a uh, uh, ice pack basically that's uh, it's formed to your hip and it gives you a continuous temperature of cold uh, water um, to help keep swelling and pain down I had to, to do, that, do that for four hours a day and when I wasn't doing that I was trying to take a shower or um, eat um, it was a full-time job in itself um, uh, one of the other things that I did to prepare ahead of time was I made a lot of meals that I could put in the freezer um, so that my mom, all she would have to do was defrost and stick them in the oven um, to prepare. I think those lasted for three to four weeks. I think she made one dinner on her own um, and maybe... She made two sides uh, to go with whatever I made throughout the whole four weeks. So I did that to make her job easier because I knew she was going to be running around getting me on and off machines uh, that I wasn't going to be able to get on and off by myself. 
Um, so let me take you through um, some of the things that I bought um, to make this a little easier and um, show you some of the things that I thought I was going to need more than I did, some of the things I thought I was going to like more than I did, and um, let's get started. So one of the things I mentioned uh, that I purchased was a dress kit. Uh, I got this one off of Amazon. It is four pieces. Um, it comes with this uh, dressing stick. Um, you're supposed to be able to put your shoes on, take them off and a little hook here for clothing to help pull your clothing up. I didn't use this very often. Uh, I found that this part of it, it's very hard and it kind of hurts when you're trying to um, take your shoes off with it and it's just, I really couldn't find a use for it. And, um, and then this hook to pull your garments up, um, it, it would just get caught um, when I was trying to use it and it was a little frustrating uh, when this gets caught and you're you know you in an awkward position trying to get your clothes on um, to kind of mess with this so I didn't use this very often um, you may find that it works for you I didn't uh, it also comes with this uh, long handled uh, tong shoe tong I uh, use this several times a day to get my shoes on and off. Um, uh, came in handy a lot. I really liked it. Uh, I don't think there was anything that I would change about that. Uh, this is another grabber or reacher, however, however you want to call it. Um, this is good. Um, it does. It is a little awkward. Um, it's only good for light clothing. I wouldn't use it uh, to pick up things around the house. It's just not going to hold that weight. And it will get stuck uh, now and again. Um, it will get stuck in that position. You just have to just push it apart. It doesn't, doesn't take a lot of strength to do that. It just, uh, it just gets caught. Um, it does have this if you want to uh, attach it to your crutches, but like I said, this is really only good for light clothing, um, not for heavy objects. And I think it'll say that um, in the description box um, on the Amazon site. Uh, this is to put uh, socks on. Um, what you do is you put uh, this end into the opening of your socks and your socks should be bunched up all the way and this goes as far as it can go in and you slide your foot in there and you use these ropes to pull your sock onto your heel. Um, these things take practice. I spent a couple of weeks uh, practicing with these and I'm glad that I did because it made post-surgery a lot easier um, knowing what things were going to work for me ahead of time and what things weren't so that I wasn't wasting my time and then just trying to get the techniques down and finding little tips and tricks uh, that made it easier for me um, I also I use this uh, in the bathroom I always kept this in the bathroom um, uh, so that I can sit uh, on the bathroom um, toilet seat um, to get dressed and undressed. And that's just kind of where it lived. It's the best place that I found for it. Um, this bag did not come with a dress kit. I bought it separately. Um, I bought it so that I could put my dress kit in it and be able to carry it if I needed to from room to room and just kind of put it on my shoulder. Um... Because I thought that I would want to maybe get dressed in the bedroom or get dressed in the bathroom. And I wanted that option without having to carry a bunch of individual items. Um, what I did was I put a command hook. I put up several command hooks um, for my post-op stuff. But I put a command hook 
and I just placed that on there and this is where my dress kit lived uh, for the 13 weeks um, that I was on 90 degree bending restriction. So, um, and this is where I got dressed and undressed majority, most, I mean, all of the time. Um, so again, I just, I, I bought this bag for ease of transporting my dress kit from room to room if I needed to, and also for storage. Um, I'm most likely going to need a second, um, hip surgery in a, in a few years and everything that I bought I bought with the intention of reusing it uh, for that second surgery um, if need be so let me take you um, another thing I bought was this shower chair um, the height is adjustable on here. I got this off of Amazon through a company uh, named Nova. Um, I wanted something with handrails on it and I wanted a back to it uh, for safety reasons. Another thing that I purchased um, was this handle. Um, it was sturdy for about months and then about a week ago um, it started falling off um, I'm not sure how much longer it's gonna hold on to but this is from a company named Beave but like I said um, it stayed on there um, for as long as I needed it to I don't use it anymore but um, it was it was a good suction handle in case I needed to balance um, Another thing that I purchased was this uh, giraffe. It's a long handled uh, holder for your razor. Um, it'll hold any razor that has a rough or rubberized surface. Um, all you do is push this down to take the razor in and out. Um, so that was good for uh, shaving my legs. Um, this is a long handled sponge. It came with a dress kit. Um, I bought this uh, bathroom command hook um, to put this on. Um, it did a good job of, of holding on to it. Um, I didn't have any issues with it. Another thing uh, that I kept, that I put in the shower was this uh, grabber. I think this holds about five pounds or something like that. Um, it's a really nice grabber. Uh, again, it's uh, by Vive. Um, it's a really good product and this, um, this, the head of the grabber rotates so you could use it like this or um, you can turn the end of it um, and rotate it. Let me see if I, can, if I can show you. You just pull it out and then this turns and it just snaps back in so you can use it this way. Or you pull it out and you turn it back and you can grab it this way, whatever you need. So it's it's a nice uh, adjustable handle. I kept this um, hanging in the shower so that I could uh, dry my lower legs off. Um, could, what I did was I put uh, a washcloth or a hand towel and I secured the handle with uh, a rubber band to keep this closed and then I just used it to uh, dry my legs um, just to make sure I wasn't bending. Uh, more than I was supposed to. Another thing I bought was a shower cap. Um, I knew I was going to be sitting in that shower chair and I knew there were going to be days where I wasn't going to need to to wash my hair and I just wanted uh, something to keep my hair dry. 
Another thing that I did was I swapped out our shower head. We had a very old shower head, didn't have a separate handle. So I purchased this off of Amazon. It was $25. Um, it's got about 25 settings on it from what I can remember. And um, I wanted it because it came handy to uh, take a shower in the chair by having this handle there. And it was a good purchase and I'm really happy with it. This I purchased separately. Um, I can put a link down for everything that I'm showing you. I could put a link down in the uh, description box below. Um, this has worked very, very well. It's just a suction. Um, it's a little confusing from the website to tell how to suction it to the wall, but it's very sturdy and uh, you know, I took this on and off you know, a thousand times and it, it turned out really well. So I'm glad that I purchased that. Um, it also has uh, an adjustable little notch up there to go from the main shower head to the handheld shower head, or if you want to run both at the same time. And it also comes with its own little handle, uh, but I wanted to purchase this one so that it would be within reaching distance. Um, also, I moved everything uh, to a lower shelf so that I could reach it from my chair. Another thing I purchased was this little bath seat. I got it at Bed Bath & Beyond. I wanted something light that I could kind of um, push around if I needed to. Um, I needed something that I'd be able to bend down and, and, and pick up without breaking my 90 degree uh, restriction. Another thing that I did was I put this command hook here. Um, this is a long handled um, lotion applicator. Um, it's again by Vive. Um, it worked, worked very well. Uh, you have to be careful that the end of it uh, doesn't pop off. Um, it did a couple of times and then I kind of uh, just learned what you know not to move it back and forth and uh, in a direction which would make it pop off in other words so but it comes with replaceable um, applicators here and you just put the lotion on and you just rub it on your legs so I use this for my lower legs and I kept it here on the command hook um, and then I also found, what I also found helpful was having a little bag here for garbage so that I wasn't having to uh, get my crutches to move to the other end of the bathroom for the, um, to get to the trash can. Just found it a lot easier. Um, this, I'm not sure if I mentioned it. In this clip I might have deleted it um, this is a rail by Vive uh, it's very sturdy um, used it a lot in getting on and off the toilet it also comes with um, a basket um, it's portable I didn't want anything that I was gonna have to um, bolt to the seat uh, I wanted something that I could take down and uh, disassemble and store uh, for another time. Another thing I found helpful was keeping things on the countertop uh, that I knew I was going to need. Uh, normally this would, uh, would only have oral care products in it and it would be in my cabinet down there. Uh, but anything that I used every single day um, that would typically be at a lower level, I just set up here on the counter um, so I wouldn't have to bend down or ask for help. Um, typically, it would be right there, um, but I pulled it out specifically for the surgery. Uh, another thing that I would suggest, I use this multiple times a day, is a leg lifter. Uh, you put your foot into this, it's very stiff. Um, you can also mold it to your foot or your shoe and 
put your foot in there and then this has a handle on the other end and you just keep your legs straight and you can move your leg on and off the bed without breaking your 90 degree restriction. Um, I also had a command hook that this lived on. Right here by the bed. Um, I would definitely recommend you uh, putting as many command hooks as you think you might need uh, just to keep things off the floor because like I said uh, once they get there um, unless you have a grabber that is right next to you or you have somebody um, with you uh, you're not going to be able to get it. Uh, this is a cryo machine uh, that I purchased it basically is a nice pack machine that this forms to your hip and uh, it helps with swelling and pain. Um, it was rec highly recommended by my doctor and I went through um, his referral company uh, to purchase this. It was $250, uh, but I thought it was worth it. Um, especially since I may be having a second surgery a few years down the road. I figured it's uh, a good investment. So some of the things that I found uh, very helpful was having the stool by my um, bed. Um, it helped me um, sit down on the bed without breaking my 90 degree uh, bending restriction. Um, and this was kind of my setup uh, at bedside here, minus the scanner. But I had my cryo machine there, and then where the scanner was, I'd uh, keep my drinks or my pain medication or uh, Kleenex, anything that uh, I needed, I would um, just keep there at bedside. Um, and I had a hook there for um, my leg lifter, which I used every time I got in or out of the bed. Um, another thing I bought uh, after surgery was this little laptop tray. Um, uh, I thought it'd be nice to be able to have a book on it or eat uh, when my leg wasn't um, being moved by the motion machine. Um, also, it came in handy for like work-related things as well. Um, it collapses in the back. Um, I got this off of Amazon. Um, another thing I got was when I was able to uh, turn to the side, I bought this pillow um, because for a couple of weeks there, I wasn't able to uh, lay on my side to sleep or I can't, you know, I wasn't gonna lay on my stomach or anything like that, I had to be on my back. And once I was strong enough um, to lay on my side, I had to have this in between my knees and my ankles to keep uh, my leg from turning inward um, to keep my femur and my hip in the right position. I got this off of Amazon. Um, it's held up, it's held up really well. Um, it, this is a really good purchase. Um, one of the things I had to, I have to do every morning is, um, be on a stationary bike for 30 minutes every day. Um, my mom let me borrow hers. Um, it's adjustable, obviously, and um, I just used a timer off of my uh, iPhone. Uh, one of the things uh, that was very helpful to me was having uh, this step stool there. Um, when you're on crutches and you're trying to get on and off a bike, it's helpful, especially when you're short, to have a step stool so that you're not bending um, the wrong way. Another thing that I bought um, after riding this bike for a few weeks was an extra cushioned seat I bought off of Amazon. Um, 
it made a huge difference in um, how comfortable uh, being on this thing for 30 minutes is. Um, it was a good, it was a good purchase. Um, I was supposed to continue uh, being on this bike uh, for about three more months um, until my follow-up, uh, my second follow-up appointment. Um, so one thing that I would recommend to you is if your uh, surgeon is very aggressive in your in your at home uh, physical activity, um, as far as being on uh, machines for a certain amount of hours a day or um, medications or anything like that, is to keep a little sheet uh, next to your bed and write down the times that you're getting on a machine and, and what times you're getting off a machine, off of the machine. Uh, that way, if you're like me and you have to be on the machine four hours a day and you're breaking that down throughout the day, um, sometimes at, at the third time you're like, is this my third time? Is it, you know, is it my fourth time? Because all the days seem to run together and uh, after a while it just makes it hard to kind of keep track. Um, so I wrote down times uh, that I was on the CPM machine and the cryo machine and uh, I also wrote down since I had to do physical at home physical therapy three times a day I also wrote down uh, the times that I did those so that I wouldn't get mixed up because I wanted to make sure that I followed everything exactly as a doctor prescribed so that I could have optimal results um, and so this was very helpful to me. Um, you might use your iPhone or phone uh, to log any of that kind of stuff. Um, another thing uh, that I would recommend is um, if you can hire help, uh, even if it's just part time, uh, really consider that. Um, I considered it and then I thought, well, I, I won't. I won't do that. My mom's going to be here and my husband and my girls are going to be here. And, um, thinking back on it, I probably should have hired at least part-time help. Um, because my mom was running around taking the girls to school and picking them up from school and after school activities and tutoring and trying to make sure that she was home, um, to get me on and off machines and, uh, getting my lunch and breakfast. And, uh, it was, it was a lot for her. And I wish I would have hired, um, some part-time help to at least give her, um, a break. Cause I know she was working a lot, uh, during that time. And I wasn't able, I wasn't able to do much. Um, another thing to be aware of is that, um, Obviously, when you have hip surgery, um, you're not going to be able to lift to lift your leg. You're not going to have any strength. So anytime you're trying to get on and off a bike, it's going to be a struggle, and you're going to have to um, support your leg, um, which, you know, when you're getting on and off a bike, you're probably just going to have to use your hand, um, you know, to stable stabilize your thigh and when you're getting on and off the bed use the leg lifter that I demonstrated earlier um, um, as much as I try to have a grabber and um, have my dress kit and as much as I insisted on being able uh, to shower by myself and shave my legs and get dressed by myself um, there's still a lot of other things that other people have to do um, for you that you're just not going to be able to do. And, um, still to this day, you know, 13 weeks later, I'm not supposed to even try to rotate my leg on my own. And even though I don't have to do that daily anymore, it's still something that, um, that I wouldn't be able, I still wouldn't be able to do at, at this point. Um, another thing uh, that I would suggest is buying a mirror, um, to put against your wall so that you can watch yourself when it's time to get off the crutches 
and practice walking because you lose so many mechanics of walking, like uh, moving your arms back and forth. When you're on crutches, you don't need to do that. And so you, you tend to forget that when you're walking, your arms and your hands need to be moving forward and backward in front of you and then back and forth. Um, you forget that motion, and that motion is a very important to activating uh, the muscles um, to walk properly. Um, so it'll help you see when you're not, help you pick up on the things that you're not doing that your body forgot to do. Um, and um, just be ready to drop a lot of stuff and ask for a lot of help. And people are not, uh, you know, people are going to get um, tired of picking things up every two minutes and things like that. Um, that you need. So if you can hire some help, um, to help you with things, to give your friends a break or your mom a break or your husband a break or whoever is, um, helping you out, it's a good idea to, to do that if you can, um, just to give them a break. Um, I can't really think of anything else. Um, I mentioned making, preparing meals ahead of time. I would just, what I did was I mentally went through my day and um, I asked myself, how am I going to take care of this? How am I going to do this um, after the surgery? And then I went through and I watched other YouTube videos and I went on Amazon and I looked for things um, that I was going to need. And I didn't worry about what other people thought, if I was buying too much or should wait on this or that. Uh, my mentality going through it was that I was the one that was going to um, be needing the help. And I knew that down the line I was probably going to need a second surgery. So anything that I bought, I went to it into it as an investment, something that I could use for a second surgery. So I didn't buy the most expensive thing. I didn't buy the cheapest thing. I bought the... the um, product that had the best reviews, um, that had everything that I was looking for that I thought that I was going to need. Um, the only thing that I bought, um, that I wasn't, that I didn't use too much because I wasn't really happy with it was, um, uh, the grabber, the green grabber that I demonstrated on the, um, crutch earlier. And it's because I bought that because it was supposed to have a magnet, but the magnet isn't very strong on um, on the on the grabber part. So I wouldn't if I had to go back and buy that particular grabber again. I wouldn't do that. I would uh, probably buy uh, a different grabber, maybe one shorter, um, and just put my own magnet on it. Um, but I wanted the magnet to pick up keys or any metal things that, that fell on the floor that were going to be harder um, to get with a non-magnetized grabber. Um, another thing is uh, just think about the things that you're going to need to pick up off the floor with a grabber and make sure that you are getting a grabber that is the right length for you. If you're going to be grabbing things out of a cabinet, make sure you're getting one that's the right length so that you're not having to back up too much or uh, having, you know, you don't want one that's too long that, you, that you're, you're having to struggle to hold the grabber closed and grab the object at the end of the grabber at the same time. Um, that was another thing with the, with the green grabber. Um, um, so just do what you feel like you need to do and that you can uh, afford and... Um, just keep in mind that, you know, it, it, it's for you and your comfort and um, nobody's going to understand what you're going through except for you. Um, and, and that's it. Just try to do um, your best to think of everything that you can um, to prepare. Uh, there's one other thing um, that I didn't think about too much at the time, but um, I just kind of assumed that when I got out of the... Uh, out of the shower that I'd be getting dressed, all my clothes would be in one area and I'd be getting dressed in that area. Uh, one of the things that I realized uh, that when I got out of the shower and I was on crutches and I was uh, putting on lotion and deodorant, 
that I realized that I wanted to have like my bra and my shirt over at the area where I had my deodorant so that when I got back on the crutches, I, I was dressed and not worrying about getting deodorant on the, um, the crutch pads. Um, so kind of think about things like that. Cause that was, that was something I didn't think about and I kind of had to work through, um, after the fact, unless you're going to get a washcloth to put on your crutch pads. Um, and one more thing is I bought wipes. Um, I have allergies, so I had to be careful about the kind of wipes that I got, but I bought wipes to keep on the rail. Um, another thing you have to kind of think about that I didn't think about at the time was that um, when you're using the restroom and you're cleaning yourself, um, you don't want to be touching your crutch um, right after you get off of the toilet. So I used it to like clean my hands and uh, clean the rails and stuff um, so that when I touched my crutch, I wasn't touching it with, with dirty hands or germy hands or anything like that. And I could uh, clean up any way that I needed to. So I kept my crutches clean. Uh, until I got to the sink and was able to wash them properly. Um, I'm sure when I stop recording this, I'm going to think about uh, a thousand other things that I forgot to mention. Um, I know this video is going to be super long, but I hope I hope you find it helpful. Um, I hope you find some of the things that I mentioned um, helpful to you or maybe inspires you uh, to think of things a little bit differently and maybe find your own way of, of um, doing things. Um, I wish you the best of luck. If you're having surgery, if your loved one is having surgery, um, I hope this video gave you a lot of insight and um, helpful ideas. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.